It's good to be the captain. It's good to be the governor. It's good to be the first mate. Hell, it's even good to be the cabin boy. No matter where you are in life, there's always some way to use your influence to increase your holdings and that of your team. Today's game is all about using your pull to get the gold where you need it to be before the game ends. So, get ready to climb that corporate ladder because today we'll be taking a look at Tortuga, 1667. We'll be walking you through the two-player version of the game. So if you've got more people, there'll be some slight differences. Place your playmat and separate all the cards according to their backs. Then take one British and one French from the loyalty card deck. Mix them as best you can and deal one to each player. This will tell you your allegiance, so you know which flag to move the gold under. Next, shuffle the vote cards and deal three to each player. You'll need these to get things done. Place the rest in a stack next to the board. Now it's time to build your event deck. Remove any cards with stars on them and the Spanish Armada card. The rules suggest that in a two to three player game that you also remove the facade, cabin fever, and three albatross cards from the game. Best to take their advice since they wrote the book. Pick three of the remaining starred cards to put back in the deck, either randomly or by consensus. Let's go with randomly. Shuffle up the deck with the star cards in it, and then place the Spanish Armada card at the bottom. This must be the last card you draw. Deal the top five event cards face down into the spots suggested by the playmat. Each player is dealt or chooses one Brethren of the Coast character card. We take two, so we can still look at our mate while being able to read the back as well. Take a pawn of the same color as both characters used in the game. Toss those pawns in the pouch and give it a shake. Then take one out and place it on the captain's space on the Flying Dutchman. The next one goes on the Jolly Roger. When you gather more players, this will go on till more spaces are filled. But in the two-player game, we stop here. Now grab the treasure, or the gold tokens, that is. Place four of them on the Spanish Galleon. Two on Tortuga, that's one on each team's space. And hand one to each captain, to place in the hold of their choice on the ship. Now you're ready to play. The captain of the Jolly Roger goes first. Them's the rules. Keep to the code, mate. In the two-player game, each player will be able to take two actions instead of one. So let's take a look at some options you have. If you're a person playing this game, meaning anybody, you may do any of the following. View two event cards. Secretly look at two of the cards on the playmat, and then put them back where you found them. You gain important inside information this way. Reveal one event card. Flip over one of the cards on the playmat and resolve its effect. Replace it with a fresh card after to keep things moving. It helps to know what the card does already, or a nasty surprise could spring out at you. Force another player to choose between two cards. Point out two of the five event cards, and your opponent must turn over one of those cards, activating its power. Another time it'd be useful to have prior knowledge so you can really put them in a corner. Deal a replacement card and move on. A quick note concerning the Black Spot card. If you turn over this card, simply do what it says. But if you flip it whilst on the island, this is what happens. Your pawn will move to the end of the line, scooting any others up. This won't affect anything if you're all alone. Next, one of your vote cards will be discarded, randomly, to the bottom of the deck. You'll be playing with one less vote card for the rest of the game. This can happen several times if your luck is that bad. So watch yourself while visiting Tortuga. Move to or from a rowboat. Think of it like a stepping stone to move between your ship and the island. Now mind you, this won't work if there's already a player token or an explosion token in that rowboat. Now if you happen to be a captain, add these options to your list of possible actions. Call for an attack. Care to relieve the Spanish Galleon of a bit of its weight? Each player whose token is on your ship must put one vote card into a pile. After everyone's done that, add one card from the deck. If you're all alone on the ship, this will only be two cards. You want to get one cannon and one successful torch. 
If there's a bucket of water, it'll douse a torch, so you must have more torches than buckets for a successful torch. <laughs> Savvy. If you fail the attack, discard the voting cards, replace them, and move along to the next thing. If you succeed, then move a piece of that precious cargo to a hold on your ship of your choosing. Captain's privilege. If the galleons run dry, well, then I guess you'll just have to take from the opposing ship. Ha ha ha, what are enemies for? Maroon another crewmate to Tortuga. Some swab been giving you the evil eye? Well, then do something about it. Banish that bilge rat to the Isle of Tortuga. However, know that once there, they're likely to rise to immediate power and quite possibly move all the treasure to their team side. If you currently hold the rank of first mate, add this option to the basic list instead. Call for a mutiny! If you fancy a promotion, kickstart your career by calling for a vote to remove the captain. Voting works the same as before, except this time, the captain won't be adding a vote card. Could be a bit biased. You'll need a majority of skull and bones. If you pull it off, move the captain's token to the back of the line on Tortuga. If he's alone, then he becomes the new governor. Not so bad. Everyone on your ship moves up in rank. Enjoy your new command. If you get more wheels, nothing happens. It's just terribly awkward. Discard and replace vote cards and everyone gets on with their lives. A cabin boy is whoever is last in line on a ship. You could be a cabin boy and a captain. Or a cabin boy and a first mate. If that's you, then add this option to the basic list. Move one treasure on your ship from one hold to the other. This is exactly what it sounds like. And if the captain is a rival loyalty, <laughs> this really gets on his nerves. Finally, if you find yourself the governor of Tortuga, you have this delightful option. Call for a brawl. This is a vote in the usual way. One card per island citizen and one from the deck. Whichever loyalty is in the majority gets both the gold tokens in that hold. If it's a tie, then one of each treasure goes equally on both holds if they're not there already. There will only ever be two treasure on this here island. When you place the last card from the event deck to the playmat, the end game has begun. Shuffle those five cards and deal them back to the five spots. No more cards will be added. One of them is the Spanish Armada, and when that card flips, it's game over immediately, mate. The team with the most treasure is deemed far superior to the other team, who must then buy them a drink. Okay, we may have added that last bit. In any case, that's the basics of Tortuga, 1667. Now you're ready to set sail and get that gold, matey! There's an expectation when acquiring a pirate game that the focus will be on treasure hunting or commanding a ship. Tortuga 1667 shows us that the career of an average pirate requires him or her to wear many hats, so to speak. The goal of this game is to gather treasure, but in this case, to your team, to whom you've sworn loyalty. You have no hope of bringing all the gold to you, so you must hop around the board, rearranging the gold in your team's favor. You will be the captain of one, or both ships, and even the governor of Tortuga before the game's over. Meanwhile, your competitor will be doing the same, each trying to undo what the other has done. Much like musical chairs, the gold pieces will travel round and round until the timer stops, and it's time to tally the profits. But unlike the children's game, your influence comes from your station, and you can help guide the pieces so long as you climb the ladder and achieve the position that allows you to make such decisions. In the two-player game, you'll almost always be in a position to move the treasure to a more favorable location. The downside is that, in the two-player version, it feels like you're missing out on much of the game without getting anything in return exclusive to this mode. You'll use less cards, and your loyalty is no secret to the other player, so the aspect of hidden allegiances is absent. Plus, you've no accomplices to help you accomplish your profitable ends. So it is you, and it is your opponent. And that's no bad thing, as the design of this game is as strong as it is simple, and the pirate theme glows like an ember. So as long as you're game for a little friendly competition, you'll have a fine time with this one. And this is one of those games that many will buy simply for the box and the components. Don't be ashamed. We love a handsome gaming shelf ourselves. 
And on that topic, the stunning artwork for this game was drawn by the amazing Sarah Keel, and as of this review, she offers to create custom captain cards for you, your pet, your friends, your enemies, whoever cares to be immortalized as a Brethren of the Coast card. Visit her Etsy store at the link in the description below before she changes her mind and be a part of pirate gaming history. That's all we've got to say, except thanks for stopping in. For yield, pirates parlay. And never put pineapple on a pizza. It doesn't go there. Oh, thanks for watching. Click the description below to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Click like if you enjoy what you see. It's a way of saying "r," And give that subscribe button a click as well to be the first to know when we've shared our thoughts on yet another game. Do you ever stop talking? Honestly, no.